Okay, I think the recording has started. Um, hi everyone. Uh, so for those of you who are not here yesterday, my name is Tosfai. Uh, I'm from the Nashes Intelligence, and currently we are working on autogen and the genetic systems. Um, so today's topic would be so yesterday we talked about uh, a genetic workflow and autogen in general. Uh, today we will uh, focus on how. Uh, our language, African language, uh, actually gets handled by the LLM. Uh, we, we, we have uh, tried to benchmark two uh, type of interactions for prototyping and production also. Um, one is uh, handling it through native LLM communication or speak. So for us, because I know Amharic, when I speak Amharic, when I uh, type uh, Amharic text, then the return will be exactly uh, Amharic text. And the second type is when I type uh, Amharic, text, it, uh, Amharic text, it will be translated into English, and then the agent will understand that English, uh, process it, and the agent's response will also be English, but we will translate it back to Amharic when we present it for the user. So. Uh, out of those two options, we have tried to create some kind of benchmark web page, and we will actually try to review that uh, right now. So uh, I have prepared a slide, so let me open that up and go through it. OK, so can you see my screen? No. Okay. okay. So today we will be focusing on how we can actually uh, move from prototyping to production or while building a high performance machine quality intelligence. So uh, today's focus will be on Amharic um, because our benchmark was done based on Amharic, um, uh, not not just because we uh, can speak Amharic, but our, our most of our employees know Amharic as well. So we'll be focusing on that, but for those of you who are not in um, Ethiopia or understand Amharic, uh, then you can actually try it out with other languages as well, with native languages. And you know, Ten Academy is like for Africa, so you should try sometimes some things to actually uh, think of this type of uh, melting quality agents, right? So yeah, let's start. So what's the purpose? So we will try to evaluate the multilingual abilities of uh, LLMs. We will be focusing on um, Amharic language uh, for today. We will try to compare the performance, cost, and effectiveness of each uh, method. Okay. Um, okay. Importance. So why is it important? So it will ensure inclusivity. It will enhance our customer service. If you actually try to create some kind of chatbots in our uh, native language. Uh, by Amharic, because it's one of the underrepresented uh, languages in technology, so I actually have to add the language. Technology and NLP, because one, Amharic is one of the low resource uh, uh, languages that, that are mentioned, so yeah, that's why Amharic was chosen, uh, and it is, it's a semantic language with script and complex morphology. Um, different people have, have, have actually tried creating uh, Amharic uh, NLP um, ML models uh, that will be able to handle Amharic language, but they are not actually perfect yet. Not at, at least not as good as the uh, European languages. So. Um, when it comes to these LLMs, specifically GPT-4, GPT-4O, uh, Amharic sentences show up to 10x token size compared to their uh, similar English sentences. And this uh, has actually forced us to look into this translation uh, system as well. So translation is usually counted in characters. So one Amharic character is one English, uh, is one. Uh, one English character is one, so it's one uh, impression. So it's really good in terms of cost as well for us, uh, because the normal LLM token, it is 10x. Okay. So that's why we like to uh, to uh, process everything, benchmark, and uh, come up with some kind of uh, recommendation. So the goals include to provide this detailed comparison of the uh, LLM performance in Amharic to analyze the cost efficiency. So we have actually uh, talked about these things. 
Uh, so what are the methodologies that we have tried? Uh, so first, it will be uh, the native LLM capability. So the metrics used for both would be uh, execution time, cost, and response quality. So we used GPT-40. Uh, we the agent for flow was done in autogen. Uh, so the process would be you will uh, input a Maric uh, text. So the processing language will be decided by the LLM, but we try to force it to use a Maharic as well. Uh, but it can choose uh, its own. We have tried different uh, benchmark for that as well. Uh, the output would be generating of response directly in a Maharic. That will be forced. Um, then there is the second methodology is using a translation API. Uh, so this, this uses the same metrics, but the cost will be OpenAI plus translation cost. Uh, the LLM use will be the same, agentic workflow will be the same, the prompt will be the same, except a few of these language uh, uh, barriers between the two. Uh, the translation API we used was uh, Azure Translate Service uh, API. Uh, so the process would be the text, the input would be Amharic text, then it will be translated into English when we uh, give it to the LLM, uh, the agent, sorry. Then the agent will handle this uh, task uh, in English between the worker and the agent. Everything will be in English. The provided context as well will be provided in English. And then the LLM will, the agent will respond in English. We will translate it back to uh, Amharic for the user using the uh, Azure translation. API. Okay, so testing environment. So the prompts are exactly similar, but uh, when using translation, we for the LLM to communicate in English. So uh, for the uh, for the um, translation, when we use translation API, we force it to speak in English to communicate in English. When we uh, use the native LLM, we try to force it to use the Amharic language as it comes. In. Uh, so hardware is like locally, we try to edit it locally, software is WebSocket plus React web page. Uh, so the network is local, so latency should be considered. And we talk about the performance and so on. So testing queries. So for this uh, simple benchmark, we try to uh, uh, give it three different queries. First one will be, will be a simple greeting and short answer uh, questions. So like saying hello, explanation of simple general knowledge questions would be like the first one. This would be a simple uh, uh, query. Then the next one will be a simple question and answering with RAG. So yesterday I've shown you how we set up our RAG and how the uh, uh, Italian uh, law actually uh, we can actually retrieve from we have yet. So we actually used that. But we, for Amharic natives, we try, we try to translate it to Amharic language. For English, we try to translate it to English, so that's the Italian uh, does not uh, cause any problems or some kind of skew basically for our results. Um, then we have a simple document building with requirement gathering as a skill. Uh, for this, uh, uh, we have, so the prompt is uh, similar. So the uh, LLM agent actually had to, for, for this, uh, for this uh, simple project, simple benchmark project, we had, uh, I think, two or three uh, skills. The first one was requirement gathering. The second one is uh, document building, which is for this focus, it will be a lease, a lease, a lease agreement uh, document building. Uh, third one uh, is simple question and answering for the second queries. So yeah, the document uh, we used for this benchmark with, with two types. The first one is one page document of a lease agreement. And second one is a four page document, similar lease agreement, but a, a little bit longer. Okay, so let's just go through a web page demonstration really quickly. And uh, we'll continue from there. Okay, think. Okay. So let me go through some of the uh, benchmarks. So the most important benchmark. So let's go to benchmark 17, which I have some details on my hand. Uh, 
on paper. So let's check if we get. Okay, let's refresh it. Give me a moment. Let me start my back end. Okay. Okay. So this is just a simple query uh, question and answering uh, for basically a general knowledge question. Nothing important, but just to see uh, how that how would the LLM be able to answer those questions. Um, so, if you guys can uh, uh, actually understand, Marik, you can actually uh, go through it yourself. But for those who if uh, do not understand or read Amharic, uh, so we start with saying hello, and uh, the response. So this is the first part would be uh, it, use, it will use the LLM's multilingual ability. So the second one will use the translation API. So that this is the second uh, modality of our, our benchmarks, and this one be, will be what the internal message look like, okay, without the translation to Ethiopia. So it is really totally English. So you can actually see for those who doesn't uh, read Amharic, you can see what the uh, goal was, and what the answer was in English. And this is similar uh, to uh, this English answer, but in, in Amharic using Azure Translation API. So uh, we start with hello. Uh, it will give us answer. So for those who understand Amharic, so, uh, it's not bad. It gave us an answer. So, it, 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 so both of them look good when we ask it uh, hello. And then when you ask it like, what is Earth? So the English one actually came up with a good answer. Uh, the Amharic one didn't actually give an answer for, for those who doesn't understand. It tried to say like Earth uh, is not uh, a word in, in law. So uh, please ask me uh, something that's related to law. Okay. Um, so on our own, on the prompt, we didn't actually uh, specify like you have to only answer uh, with the low questions so this may not uh, be the right answer for us and this might be the right answer based on the prompt Oops. if we have actually uh, forced it to not answer anything other than low questions then this would be right but for now this is not the right answer but we ask that again like um do you know what the law means then so the postcard is right. And the Amharic one gave a small answer, but the uh, uh, translated ones gave a long answer and both of them seem right. Um, but this one seems long. But in terms of uh, elapse of time and cost, uh, so the Amharic, even though the answers were really, really small, the elapse of time is really long compared to what it took to actually translate and uh, execute everything in English that translate back to Amharic. Um, so it's more than double for this case. Um, so latency should be considered, yes, but uh, not this much gap should uh, appear. And this happened consistently throughout our benchmark uh, cases. Uh, on the cost, for uh, open AI cost, it will be like 0 0.06 for this simple query in answer. Um, for this one, it came up to 0 0.0399. And the OpenAI cost was really small. 
uh, 0.021, even though the answers were really, really low, like as you see, and really quality uh, answers. Um, yeah, so this is our first benchmark. So one, one of the uh, observations that we had here in the background, uh, you know, uh, is uh, the native LLM actually made uh, low, through, low receiver for both uh, questions, which shouldn't have happened because these things does not actually need to be retrieved. And the English one actually got it right, and it didn't actually uh, retrieve anything to answer these questions. Um, this one was weird, so that's something to note. That's something we have observed. Uh, let's continue to benchmark 18, uh, uh, which we uh, tried simple q &A with RAC. So with uh, the Italian law translated into English and Amharic, both ways. Um, so we started by saying hello. Uh, hello. Then here it appears some kind of. Uh, it seems like your message was empty. So if you actually, if you guys actually have uh, checked out Autogen, uh, when the user proxy uh, returns an empty message, it comes up uh, something like this, because the termination message was not sent by the agent. The user proxy tries to uh, auto reply, and it got this kind of message. So this is something. Uh, on the prompt itself, not, not the issue with is, uh, English because we no, it's a general thing that the English have to perform better than the American one, but the American one actually got it right on this point. Um, then we asked it, what does the law say about civil rights and domestic rights? So they both got some answers. They are different, but maybe it is not our uh, our they say role or uh, understanding that the law, these are the laws, the exact laws that uh, talk about civil uh, rights and uh, domestic rights. But this one, the English one, seems to be an appropriate one because uh, when we search it through Google, this kind of answer actually appears so much. So, uh, both of them, so this one actually did uh, retrieve as well. So that's that's some some point for it, but uh, yeah. Then we continue to ask it like, uh, what does so here is it. so do men and women have equal rights in a family? And it said yes, both of them have equal rights on the native LLM on the translation API. It actually tries to get the exact article that it got it from. It tries to give us an answer like yes, they have equal rights based on this uh, article one or four one four three uh, and so on. So it's really good. So this one actually came up with really good answers. Um, so performance wise, uh, similarly as you can see, it, it took more time to process this Amharic uh, natively than the uh, translate one. Uh, you can see how much the English one took. So. The difference between the two is uh, time for the translation. So the translation time is really fast. Uh, um, then the cost in total will be 0 0.09 for uh, translation plus OpenAI. Uh, for the native LLM, it will be 0 0.08. So it's a little bit higher, a little bit higher, but the, the, the return answer is really long and it's really a uh, quality answer. And some of the observations that we took from this uh, benchmarking was uh, different retrieval results were found when we uh, do both uh, ways. And the answer from the uh, native LLM was, so this one, specifically the last one, uh, was not based on a retrieved uh, logs. So this is one of the qualities that this one had. You know, it, it was able to mention the uh, article answer. So this is one of the observations. So this is really a quality answer when we use translation API. And let's continue. So let's be uh, faster this time. So I think you understand the flow and how everything goes. Um, yeah, let's continue benchmark 19. See, so this is the same thing, but instead of giving it a translated in Amharic, so their trip flow previously we gave it in Amharic, we translated it into Amharic for the Amharic, so for the native LLM and for this uh, trans using translation API, we translated it in English. But for this benchmark, we tried the translation to English for both. No. So even this one got the retrieve close as English. And the results uh, were really good and it actually became like similar. 
So uh, even though this one really is longer and more context driven, uh, this one actually got it right. And some of the observation we had here where uh, this one had one more uh, result than this one. So yeah, so it pretty much got closer, but not as detailed as this one. And this uh, performance and cost is uh, really became like a thing, you know, everything looks there. You know, so it is 0 0.082 here, 0 0.083 here. The quality answer is this one. And still uh, the cost is uh, with the native LLM. So we can see that, we can see the trend where we are going with this. Um, then let's continue to any, so uh, let's continue actually to four to 20, okay. So this time, uh, we are trying to uh, draw a rental agreement between two companies, okay? So this is an interesting one uh, because, sorry guys, uh, we would require two things. First, we, we have to uh, gather some requirements. Um, second, we have to build document. So this was a more interesting part for us because we were building this legal uh, assistance for a company and uh, we had to come up with some kind of skill that can actually gather the requirement and then process that uh, required uh, details and come up with a contract that is filled with those uh, details. And this was interesting for us for that reason. And when we asked it to uh, actually come up with some questions, it actually came up with good ones, both of them. These are not bad. Both of them are really good. This one seems to have more detail. And then we gave it like a brief uh, detail on what kind of contract we need, who the lessee uh, is, the lesser is, and so on. And what was the final result? So, so for the uh, Amharic LLM, it, it actually came up with, uh, at last, it came up with an English answer, which we didn't uh, want because it should have given us uh, the answer in Amharic. This one got it right. Uh, and yeah, this is in English, so this, this would be good. And when we view the document, okay, so the Amharic LLM actually came up with an empty uh, uh, template con contract. So this is uh, not a good sign. For the Amharic, uh, trans with translation, it came up with a good uh, contract, which is filled. This is a signature place. Uh, the only issue we had is around this area where uh, ABC, uh, this is in Amharic, LLC, should have been uh, ABC property management LLC. So this kind of name conversion is some of the points that we took from this uh, translation API. And if it was actually, so what we found out is if, we, if it was actually like a, a better translation API for this uh, Amharic language, uh, specifically uh, the Google translation API, it might have been really good, better, even better than this one. Okay, and it might have been a perfect uh, answer for us. Um, so that's one of the takeaways that we what, that we get from here. But in terms of cost and performance, still you see the more time, the, the more native we use, the more time it takes, um, and the cost is actually uh, closer. But this one is a really good answer and really good quality answer. So yeah, uh, we wanna need to uh, compare the costs because the uh, answers are really really different, and the answer is from the translation API is really really good. As uh, we can see some of these translation issues, like, so this is a Magenta termination for which is trying to say, uh, let's see, early termination. So termination should have been covered, but it's not. But these are some of these uh, niche places that we saw this translation API might not be uh, feasible, but uh, overall it's much better answer than the native uh, LLM answers. Then if you continue to, so this is basically a one pager, uh, a one pager uh, document that we tried to build. So if we move to, uh, I think, benchmark 24, 
Let's, let's move forward with this so that we can continue on the slide. Okay, I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this time, the questions and everything is similar. Um, but you can see the answer for this uh, last message, the last request is still English. It did not actually uh, did the right thing, but the documents, it actually did good, except it added this by, by itself, which is okay, uh, because uh, these points uh, actually matter. It's not the, co the contract template that we gave it, but uh, it, it is not a bad answer, actually, like the, the previous one. And the filling of these details is really good. So just like we mentioned, ABC property LLC and everything, the names, everything has been filled really, really good. Um, yeah, so that, this is something that we saw. Uh, so the English is still good. So it, it so the the basic difference when we look at this uh, building one page of document building is the trans using translation APIs actually gave us like a, a really consistent answers, uh, a good ones as well. Some niche niche issues like converting this kind of English letters and converting some of the names like ABC. Uh, ABC property management LLC to ABC LLC in America. So these are some of the issues that we saw with the translation API. I don't know that it was really good in terms of cost, in terms of uh, time elapsed as well. So you can see, so for to produce this message, it took like 160 seconds. Uh, for this one, it took 60 seconds. It was going to be like uh, half of what we have uh, to wait for this uh, native LLM. So let me quickly go through the last one, which was benchmark 25. So benchmark 25 is something that gave us like, yeah, this might not be good using this native LLM, this hence. Um, so for this one, we we used a bigger uh, contract template than a one pager, which is a four pager contract template. And the result is, so. Finally, the, result, the final result was in Amharic, except some of these places I can see. Uh, but the result, if we see here, is so we generate our uh, document inside this uh, JSON and we give it like we took this content, place it in a document, and provide it to the user, just like we saw earlier. But this time, uh, it couldn't actually finish its, its uh, process and it stopped at this point. The, the results were really, really good, as you can see. Uh, so something that we took from it is it couldn't handle a really, really well documents. Like it, if it couldn't handle even the four pager document, it might not be able to, uh, we, we might not be able to use like three or uh, four or five uh, page documents. Um, and something that we did also without this uh, benchmark web page is we took the entire content, context, the prompt, everything on the chat uh, .gpt UI. We gave it uh, this, the same thing and the, the product was similar. It stopped at some point, but the main uh, chat GPT UI had a button called continue generating. When you press that, it will continue and come up with a good answer. Uh, so, yeah, we need that continue uh, generating button in order to actually finish this uh, content generation. And uh, for now, we haven't found out a way on the API that how we would do that. Uh, but maybe if, if we had that, we can continue uh, producing the document and see what kind of uh, document is actually produced. It seems really good also. It's really, it seems really good. But the Amaharic, uh, it's really, it is consistent. You can see it's a four pager document. It's longer than the, the previous one. The details are right, mm -hmm. except this few Amharic conversions, which we didn't want. Um, with English, uh, with uh, Google Translate API, it, it, it seems to perform much better. So, some of the takeaways are those. Uh, with time elapse, you can see even producing this kind of not complete uh, document, it okay. took much more time. And the cost is too much for an API, open API cost. You can see the difference with open API cost. This is for English, for Amharic, this is for English, and you can see the real difference between those two. Um, and 
so that's the, our whole um, takeaway, some of our observation. We have actually put it uh, in the presentation as well. So let's get back to the presentation and continue from there. So what were the results? So if everyone, anyone has a question here that we can discuss, uh, that would be really good. Uh, I would know if you guys have been actually following up and so on. So if anyone has a question before we move on to the uh, results and so on, observation, suggestion, and so on. Okay, so let's continue. So what were the results? So for simple greetings and short general knowledge queries, so the native LLMs took uh, 21, 29, 17. Uh, it, it took like more than uh, double time that the translator to actually take. Um, you, you can see like moreover the results are the same. Uh, on cost analysis, uh, most most of the time the native LLM is higher. Uh, at some point it was lower but the the quality of the response and the documents was really really bad uh yeah so yeah let's continue response so this is this is something uh, uh, that's not like we cannot put it like statistically like this ones because this one is based on uh, personal uh, points based on the answers given and uh, based on those, the native LLM results consistently shows much more degraded results than the translated results, which were 10 out of 10 or 9 out, 9 out of 9. And something that we have we have actually tried to do with our uh, benchmarks, which we didn't see right now, I think 20, benchmark 20 and benchmark 21 and 23, where we try to tune the uh, native LLM's prompt to come up with a good answer more, because we saw that it couldn't even compete with the uh, translated uh, uh, procedures. And this, this English processing of the LLMs is really, really good than the Amharic processing of this LLM. So uh, that's, that's something um, uh, we did to, imp to improve the results of this Amharic uh, uh, native LLM. Uh, and we, we saw a really good result when we do that, but that means Every time we try to use this uh, Amharic inside this and natively, uh, we would, it would, it might require more prompting and more uh, improvements in terms of prompting to get a good, a really good result. Even though it's not as good a result as the English ones. Um, so yeah, analysis. Um, so performance analysis, we can see uh, throughout the uh, results, the execution, execution time seems to take like two X on the average when we use the native LLMs, so the translation API. Uh, then the response quality uh, using the translation API was like two X based on this uh, points that they get. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Using translation API with like two x uh, the response quality. Uh, native LLMs. Uh, the only issue we got with the translation is uh, conversion of unnecessary words like the names and some of the words that it couldn't convert. Uh, but it has a really huge potential to improve with Google Translate API, which is more costly than the actual Translate API. Okay. okay. Then we have uh, the cost effectiveness. Uh, so the cost really varies through different scenarios, but it's said to say that uh, the cost using the translation by with LLM will not cost higher in the in long run. And in fact, we believe that the cost will be much, much lower, lower than uh, the native, using the native LLM. So what are the key findings? Um, so when we use native LLMs, uh, it is really easy to implement because it, you, you just do the same thing uh, on the prompt. You just have to force it like to use the uh, client actually uh, requested. Uh, it is harder to tune to become production ready because with English, you can actually uh, do it easily, the, the prompt tuning part. 
uh, we see uh, Amharic native LLM, it is a little bit harder than the English one. And then performance on big text is really bad. That's something we saw on both the API and OpenAI uh, UI that we talked about earlier. Um, and then with translation API, what we saw is a more complex setup than the native elements. We have to convert between uh, English and Amharic and English. Uh, we have to also convert the documents as well. So uh, those, those posts will be uh, on us. Um, of course, it's really simple, like putting translation APIs, but Compare it, compare, comparing it with the native LLMs is more complex. Um, it's much easier to tune uh, because it's it, it's much better to understand English. Than the Greek. And the performance of translation uh, depends on the translation service provider. And Google Translate service seems to be much better for Amharic. Uh, so the cost is really uh, big, which is devil. Um, why we used Azure Translate service uh, in the first place? So it, it costs. Uh, Ten dollar for a million dollars for a million uh, characters, and for Google Translate it costs twenty dollars for a million uh, characters. So it's not it's nothing against Google Translate, but the Azure Translate was uh, better in terms of cost for us, and we tried that uh, trans uh, translation service. Um, so yeah, what's the conclusion? So what's the our conclusion? So. Maybe identifying key areas to use each strategy uh, is a better option. Uh, so for for small forms, data filling, it can be easily achieved by a native LLM interaction. It can be, it may not be the most optimal uh, uh, thing, but it can be done with a native LLM interaction. But any other introduction seems to be much better with the translation services, even though some English uh, to American conversion uh, word conversion might not be really good. Uh, it shows to be a much promising thing than the native LLM. For now, to take something from the prototype to production, it seems to be a much better option to use a translation service. Um, then there is a long for a long form output using translation with better service providers. So just like we talked uh, earlier, using the Google Translate API might be a better option than this one. Um, and uh, something that we should take a notice, this is basically for the Amharic language and low resource uh, languages. Uh, for the European languages, it's really not such of a big, uh, difficult thing to do natively by the LLMs, but for low resource uh, languages like Amharic, it, it, it turns out to be really, really hard. And I don't know if you guys have actually looked through uh, Maybe the Ethiopian guys uh, just, just know Amharic. When people try to build this uh, machine learning models that will understand Amharic better, they usually use a translation API to translate everything in, uh, everything that was in English to Amharic and train them, say, their model using that Amharic, the translated Amharic content. So basically, basically what they are telling us is they are actually using this translation service as well. So uh, we are not that far off from them. So. And what are the future works and experiments that uh, might take this uh, benchmarking and uh, everything that we did here to another level is what if we use a Google Translate API for much accurate output? So this is something that we were able to see, not in details like the Azure Translate API, but we were able to see that it's better. And for data filling using JSON output. So uh, for the uh, for the uh, document building, what if we had like a, uh, a document template in, let's say, in Jinja format and so on, and then the LLM produces the uh, contents that we will be putting in so inside those templates, and we fill that uh, those contents inside those templates so that everything will be seamless, uh, and it pretty, it pretty much guarantees. Uh, a really good output, but it will require much more engineering than these two solutions that we have provided earlier, the two uh, experiments that we did earlier. So, yeah, basically that's what we uh, tried to do because uh, taking something from prototype to production is really hard in, in English itself, but 
trying to do it with a lower low resource language like Amharic, it turns out to be a much harder thing because at, until now, uh, we can say like until now, we, might, we, we do not have any uh, good um, LLMs that actually interacts with Amharic. Uh, GPT-4 all seems to be good, but maybe not that good in the long run. And using translation API with this uh, LLM's performance, it's really uh, what we can say a high performance multilingual LLM. And you guys can actually try it uh, with other languages, other uh, African languages, maybe the Nigerian ones. Uh, I don't know other languages, but you guys have actually used English. So it might be really good for you uh, to try other languages as well, Kenyans, and so on. Kenyans also, I think, uh, communicate in English much better. Uh, but the others, uh, maybe. The Ghanaians, still English. But uh, we, we we can try these low source languages if these LLM, LLM agents can actually match that. Uh, like, match the English ones. Uh, if not, can we? use the translation service to actually achieve what we want to achieve and that's something we should look at because as, as an africans we have to like consider what uh our actually what, our, what we can do to our people or to our uh, economy to our uh, project as well um so yeah uh, that's it from me if you have any questions so everything that we you saw uh, earlier it was based on uh, uh, Autogen, this, it was a similar uh, web socket that we used uh, yesterday. Uh, the front end is the same, except we, we instead of one chat window, we made it three chat windows. Um, and yeah, the storage was uh, 3x because we are storing a translator, not translator, to the native uh, LLM's response, and so on. But it's the same thing. So you guys can actually do the same thing for your uh, languages, maybe for those uh, that do not uh, uh, that actually understand, like in Ethiopia, for example, or or on Wi-Fi, you can actually try that uh, with this uh, benchmarking uh, methods and so on. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer that. Or maybe if you guys actually have tried, yeah, okay. Okay, Javis. Okay, uh, I, will, I, I just want to ask the, the business objective kind of question. Uh, how do you okay. see the, the need for this? Because I, I see that it, Especially, we tried to fine tune before uh, an LLM for Amharic, and it seems costly, especially uh, uh, low because it's uh, there is no enough uh, data. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, how, how do you see the business? Uh, do people want, or is there a, a business advantage for uh, putting all the resources on this part? And do, do you think it's uh, business wise um, advantages? Um, yeah, so uh, so currently maybe maybe uh, most of so I'm sorry for the uh, non Ethiopians, but in Ethiopia maybe uh, more of the people that actually use more of the technology are in Addis Ababa, and more of those people actually understand uh, English uh, also. So it may not be like hundred uh, percent success is the first time, but in a long term, I think. Uh, starting right now to uh, actually uh, build this kind of chatbots where Amaharic actually be used as a communication uh, channel is a really good option. And as you, as you said earlier, many people have actually tried to create these LLMs where the, the LLM will be able to understand Amaharic and respond in Amaharic in a much better way. But it, it, does, it, in, in, it ends up being really costly and uh, resource, uh, uh, it's, it requires a lot of resource, which we may not have. So that's one That's one of the ways that we are saying, like instead of training an LLM to actually understand Amharic, what if we find other solutions, you know, GPT-4O is, or, 4O is or 
uh, available for only five dollars uh, per million broken uh, translation service is available for ten dollars for a million uh, characters so we have those things so can we do something really uh, on 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 on, on amharic on, on the current phase and uh, we believe that we can so we can build something that will summarize uh, news for us in Amharic and so on so we might you, you might need, need to be some kind of interview come up with an idea where we use this Amharic um, chatbots but it, it seems like it's possible now that's what we are thinking of right now as, as a company as well uh, maybe if Yapwan was here he will have uh told you that uh we we are trying to set a tone that amharic um, can actually be used in these chatbots and that's what we are trying to show like to everyone that it's possible to do it in amharic uh, this time rather than the previous ones so, yeah so, yeah and hopefully i've answered your question james yes yes thank you uh, i think it's it seems as you showed us it seems it's possible and it's yeah. like a new idea especially the translation one seems uh, yeah. uh, low cost and also very effective uh, thank you for that yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay <laughs> Okay, thank you. So we, when you say native LLM, so do you guys train the Amharic LLM or? What uh, no, 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 no. Native LLM meaning the, the GPT-4 itself. So it is its own capability. It, it's able to understand Amharic. So what we saw is uh, the really good thing is it, it really understands Amharic. So whenever you speak to it, it really understands Amharic and the output is really, is not that bad. Uh, if the output is really small, because the cost will be higher than the English uh, counterpart. Um, when, it, when it comes to long, long uh, form outputs like like our use cases and maybe your your use case as well for this uh, uh, low 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 Q and A uh, chatbot, when the answer actually becomes really big, then the cost will become really big, because you know that GPT four always cost is for input i think it's five dollar for output is 15 or 10 dollars 15 or 10 dollars around that point so the output, the output is longer the cost will be much longer much bigger than the input one so uh, the cost will go higher as you go like long form answer and question type of thing and what is trans and one of the best thing about this trans using translation api is to actually achieve whatever we try we are trying to achieve is it seems to be much stable and much more uh, what, what, what it occurs really frequently that the answers will be really good each time it may not be uh, efficient like one or two times out of 100 times or 50 times but the other 40 times or so it will be a really good answer so we our suggestion is we should try out this um, translation translating between Amharic and English English and Amharic more if you want to achieve this right now rather than using the native LLMs capability that's that's what what we are trying to show people uh, what to do yeah in the current phase at least Well, if, if 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 you guys can come up with a really good Amharic um, LLM, we would like to see that as well. If you guys think of uh, other methodologies that uh, we can benchmark and see if we can produce a much better result, that would be really really great. Because uh, we have uh, we may have uh, projects that involves this Amharic um, language uh, processing and uh, that might be useful for us and for our research as well so yeah if you guys have any other suggestions uh we will welcome it as well okay
so yeah i don't think there are there are any other questions so on the websocket hopefully you guys yeah i have a question sorry uh, yeah go on on the user the, the agents the agents are on autogen so uh -huh. like could you tell us what, the, what your agency is so that i can uh, i was trying to understand what i am going to use for autogen in our case uh so may, may, maybe i can say like my assumption was that you have an agent for translating a uh, user agent and a user agent proxy and another agent for um, generating yeah so the agent and uh worker stuff is the similar thing like i showed you uh, yesterday it's really really similar so hopefully nathaniel has given you the collab so it's the same thing uh there are only two agents assistant agent and worker agent the translation api is just using a, a request to the azure translation api to their service to to translate everything so when we when you send so uh, if you say if you if you have seen this uh, websocket yesterday uh, we 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 did like self dot agent agent chat i think or chatbot dot uh, send message right so when we when we when it gets to that uh, function which we will translate the message into english and then uh, when we receive the last message from the llm we will translate it to arabic to be responded to the user, as you saw. Uh, for the native LLM, we didn't do any of it. It just goes in and out by the LLMs uh, 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 by itself. Um, other than that, maybe we did like some engineering to do to do some of these things, but uh, we didn't do much in terms of like adding an agent and so on. It's just uses yesterday's uh, uh, demo, just similar thing like yesterday's day okay so um, yeah. my my concern was that uh, let's say we i know i can in our rag uh, in, let's say in a rag application you can you have another agent to retrieve documents let's say uh co here is another model and uh mm -hmm. maybe is it for the ranking and maybe some others but can mm -hmm. they work also as agents in in autogen or will that be just one pipeline for 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 just the rug and you use the worker so where do you want to use this uh cohere uh because so uh if you we can use this so for so re-ranking like, yeah so if if you want to do it for re-ranking so uh so as you saw maybe i can only follow the collabs that so i think i have opened it here so I can open it maybe to just simply go over it and see if where we can actually put that. Okay. And also to just one more question. Uh, 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 could you like you, you showed us on the back end yesterday and uh mm -hmm. i was wondering how to connect the front end with the back end uh you're using i think so so for so so something for this web circuits so in the mm -hmm. react do you use the ws dot web circuit so i saw something like that to to initiate a web circuit um yeah i'm not i'm not yeah. a big uh, front end guy but i think maybe we can uh, provide you with a front end uh, something so maybe we'll see that later okay um for the retrieval so what's good about this uh, uh agent worker uh system is we have this function that we can do anything uh, within it and when you when so for example you want to rerun everything right so whenever you get this uh, retriever dot invoke those message Right, so you will get these uh, responses like maybe three, four, five. So I think that the default is three or five, three, I think. So when you get these three documents, you can actually do something here using Cohere's API. So you can you can create a uh, function where it requests the Cohere's uh, 
to a server for rerun his service. Um, you can put it here. So before this, you can like do like, uh, 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 sorry, you can do like a like result equals something like this. Let's not do string. So you might create like a function, a rerun call function, where this rerun call function will have will have something like the result. And you will be sending this result within some so the function will have to it will not be here, but what we what it will have is uh it will uh we'll call the coherence uh the ranker model using a normal uh normal request API. You need to have the API key of the cohere uh API, but uh you can get that I think there's a free uh, usage. So you can actually call a ranker function, get the ranked results again. Again, so that when you do this context stuff, you can actually do it here. Uh, so instead of this result, you can change it to this one. So, I mean, you can do something like this. So you can change this function as you want. So that's that's one of the things that makes this uh, function coding really easy. You can do whatever you want here. And whenever you want that thing to change based on something, you put it inside this parameter and you give it to uh, the properties uh, part so that uh, whatever it wants, it can actually execute. So right now, if, if it wants to, to retrieve, to retrieve. So you can maybe add here like a rerank if it, if you want to rerank. Maybe you don't want it here. You just always want to rerank. So you can do something like this. And the reranker function will have uh, we call the cohere reranker using a normal request API, and you will give the, the results as a context. So this this may not be the most optimal way to give it a custom context, but you guys know how to prompt it. Give a good context, so so maybe this uh, will answer your question. So I would say that like, just go through this uh, function. I think you can change so many things inside this function to make your uh, answers really great. You can improve this uh, prompts that you put. Uh, you can improve the result, like you said. Row ranking is one of the ways that really shows promising results. Uh, yeah, what other things can you do? Um, yeah, I think I think for you guys, those two things are the most important ones. Um, and when it comes to, so maybe, ho hopefully I have answered your question here, uh, Hillary. Uh, let's yeah. go to, yeah, let's go to this. Yeah. yeah, let me show you the front end because I'm not the best front end guy, so I, I, I've already declared that, so. Uh, so I don't know what you want to see. I can show you. This is what we are using Socketio client. Okay. So on on our context, what we do is we create a new socket. We set the uh, socket as this new socket that we get. This is our server locally. So connect it will emit a connection in it, and you can actually see the connection in it on the website. No, on the publisher. No. Yeah. You can see that on connection, it will handle the connection acknowledgement. On session in it, you can handle session in it and so on. And maybe you guys understand more than me. If you guys have worked on React before, uh, for me, I just I just play around this app. To, uh, yes. Okay, but so for the module, it's using uh, socket IO client, the front end, the front end, and it uh, tries to handle everything this this way. So hopefully you can actually see. Yeah, think about this point. This is simple. Uh, on the back end, I have already seen it. I can actually send you the back end. Maybe the front end as well. <laughs> um, 
on the front end we are using on the back end we are using socket io uh, yeah there is on connect on disconnect on init the most important one is on session init and when we receive text messages yeah so yeah, maybe we'll see we'll talk to this ten academy team and we'll see for the front end so i didn't see yeah yeah so it is for the front end i think it it handles this uh restarting and everything so i'm not i'm not the best guy here maybe not yeah. that so. maybe i can say something yeah it's yeah just, yeah yeah we have already tutorial i think all of you know it's just a, another framework to install react it's faster okay Sorry. it's really makes a lot of things easier especially when running when building up your front-end application so it's okay i think they know it as well right yes exactly you can use it to create stuff yeah. Okay, so you can go ahead. Okay, no. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you can ask. Even if it's, it's, it's uh, for the, just like what Hilary asked on the backing front and stuff, on how to set up the backing especially. Okay, so you guys seem, seem like you got it, so I'll leave it to the Tena team. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. So if you guys don't have any questions, I guess we can end the session. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye.